Uh, hi, Angela. Thanks for speaking with us tonight. Um, I guess, obviously, this has been, I can only imagine, a, a very complicated week uh, for you and for the group. Um, how do you think everyone dealt with that, given that you also had, on top of everything else, this kind of difficult game in Houston? Uh, yeah, I think, um, like, with everything going on, the team this entire week has been, like, had an incredible response. Um, everyone was super professional, um, was really focused on this game and um, bought into the game plan and everything that's going on. And they really came together and, and was like, you know, what can we do to help? How can we make this work? And I was really impressed uh, with their unity and their willingness to, you know, acknowledge everything that's going on, but also um, stay focused on the game. and. Uh, and and yeah, I uh, I uh, think they they laid it all out on the field tonight and tried um, to execute the game plan the best that they could. Uh, and just as a, a quick uh, kind of a more simple question, um, you had multiple players coming out uh, with various knocks. It looked like um, were those all just uh, various calf cramps or were they something else? Yeah, we had um, two players who were on uh, managed minutes. So uh, Hatchie and Dorian were on limited minutes for this game um, and Hatch happened to cramp at the same time. So, um, but yeah, most of it was calf cramping. It was really hot here. Um, and I think Sanchez had like an ankle knock, but for the most part, those those two were planned to come out at 60, then calf cramping and then an ankle injury, but everyone everyone is okay. Thanks. Yeah. Steve, go ahead. Thanks for your time, Angela. Um, what, uh, did you see a team out there that was um, renewed or refreshed or, or, or seemed uh, uh, to, have, to have a second wind after um, maybe some of the difficulties they've had um, over the past uh, couple of weeks, a couple of months. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, especially like being in Houston too, it's like a hard place to play. It's really hot. And for me, I was really impressed with the work ethic and the unity of the team. Um, I feel like, you know, they they didn't give up the entire game. And when things didn't go their way, they were still fighting. And for me, that was really positive because um, that's not always the case uh, when teams go through difficult times. And I really, really thought um, they stuck together and I was really impressed with their fight and their resilience tonight. I thought that they, they earned a little bit more than what they got. Great, thanks a lot. Yeah. Andre, go ahead. Hey, Angela, thanks for uh, speaking with us. I just, you know, had a, had a more of a personal question about you and how this week has been for you, you know, hired as the assistant coach in what, March, and, you know, turns around you're on the sideline for your first game as a professional coach. So uh, how, how has this week just been for you overall? Yeah, so I think the club, like Mark did a really good job at, it wasn't, it wasn't just me, me on my own. And he had a lot of, um, like I had a lot of support and he had obviously brought Mike in, um, who is on the bench with me. Um, so I feel, I feel like it could have been a lot worse, but the club was really awesome and providing like the best resources for myself and for the team, because, uh, the team, you know, deserves a, a full staff and a full preparation for the game. And so it's been a lot, it's been, um, interesting to see it on the other side, you know, um, it's different than as a player. Um, but I thought, uh, we did, we did like, we all came together and everyone was, uh, unified in that. So I felt really supported and comfortable during this whole process. I appreciate that. And, um, a question more specific to the game, you know, it seemed like going into halftime, you know, you went down, you were in, went into halftime down, but then came back, you know, storming back two quick goals from Hatch. You know, what was kind of the talk at halftime and kind of turn, turn things around? Uh, we, uh, we really focused the um, halftime on just fi fixing some like tactical pieces, um, making sure that we had the midfield rotation that we needed defensively um, just to make things more difficult for Houston. And then just made a little bit more switches, uh, putting Trent on the right and um, just giving them that belief that like there's another half and 
um, 45 minutes is done. Now we have a new 45 minutes and that we all believed in them and they need to believe in themselves individually and collectively as a team. And I feel like that was probably the best response that I've ever like seen from the group um, for a second half start and being down one zero. Um, so I was really proud, proud of the team and proud of the group and um, was really happy that uh, they were able to get those two goals. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Jason, back to you. Uh, Angela, I wanted to ask a little about, um, you know, obviously this is, a, a, like you said, a result that that you feel that they should have probably gotten a win instead of a draw. Um, that's not the first time th uh, that this has happened. Um, I was I was curious about when a pattern like this kind of settles in with a group um, on top of everything else that's going on this year. Um, are there are there methods or, or signs that that um, are in the works as far as sort of breaking that pattern um, with these late game uh, issues? Yeah, we have, we've already um, like started debriefing as a staff of like what could we have done differently? Um, is there something that we should have changed or something we, you know we can do differently? And then also, I think it just comes down to like training these scenarios um, in practice. Uh, we haven't had the time this this past week to do that. Um, but I think moving forward, especially with a little bit of a break, like that's something that we really need to hone in on because these are several games now that we're giving up late goals and we've lost a lot of points because of it. Um, so I think, yeah, as a coaching staff, we need to dig deeper and figure out um, how we can fix this. And then also just put the players in the in this situation as much as we can throughout the training week. Um, because they're not going to be as prepared for that unless we we expose them to that kind of scenario. Great. Thanks so much, Angela. Yeah. Before um, we accept your questions, I would like, or we would like to start off with a statement on behalf of the players. Um, firstly, we're frustrated that this is necessary given our history. Secondly, um, we are angered by Chris Ward's answers in the piece from The Athletic. We know the idiom that there are two sides to every story, uh, but that is simply not the case in this scenario. Um, we know his interview to be completely inaccurate. Recollection of a serious situation. Um, and furthermore, the apology offered to us last Friday demonstrates um, a misalignment in his words and his actions towards his team. The players fully support the decision of the club to relieve him of his duties as head coach. Um, and we have every intention of cooperating in a proper course of action um, as it relates to circumstances like this one. We will no longer take any questions regarding his dismissal um, or make any further comments on it at this time. We are focused on our current performances and the rest of our season and moving forward as a group and with that, we'll take any questions you have about the game tonight. Thank you. Jason, go ahead. Uh, hello to you both. Um, thanks for speaking with us. Um, I, I did kind of ask this uh, of Angela just at the end of her presser, um, just um, kind of this game is sort of part of a pattern um, with the, the late game issues. Um, is there anything that you've noticed that is sort of a commonality in it or is it just the time of these late goals and things like that happening do you have anything on that i have something i make the save we win so personally i'm upset with myself i think we can all do things a little bit better um go ahead on the field after discussing with some players um multiple multiple players said to me that as we're trying to kill the game, we concede too much space and we allow ourselves to get service after service on. Um, and we need to figure out how to defend for our lives, but do so higher up. Um, so not put ourselves in that situation. You shouldn't be making like that many entries into the 18 when you're killing off a game. Um, so that's a, it's a back to front issue. Um, and it's obviously, like you said, been a pattern. So um, unfortunately with patterns, it takes a long time to undo and fix habits. So um, I think 
Ange and, and Mike and whoever will, will help us with that going forward. Um, and, and just another um, game focused one um, in the first half, uh, Angela mentioned at halftime, there was a lot of talk about the midfield rotation. And in the first half, it looked like Houston kept finding kind of a pocket um, maybe on the, the right side of, of your shape um, be that, you know, the nexus between uh, Ashley Sanchez and Mickey own and Bigalski um, was that, part of the issue was it was them finding that spot over and over again with different players was that part of the issue and and I don't know how much you guys can say about what the adjustments were but um whatever you can whatever you're comfortable with saying uh I'd appreciate it yeah I think um we only had a few days to implement some some changes and we had a really great week of training where we implemented some new things um and the first half it wasn't clicking and uh we weren't rotating hard enough as a as a three um and that made everyone else's job harder um but that clear feedback at halftime to do so i think really helped us um establish our rhythm in the second half and then we, we gained in confidence our adjustment and we're, that's the positive we're taking from tonight is our attitude um a down a goal at half was really positive and um started the second half it's good, but we just have to get all the way through. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm. Steve, go ahead. Hey, I, for either one of you, um, without delving into to Chris Ward, trying to gloss over everything, um, uh, what, how would you describe the, the mood of the team um, now coming into this game and, and how you hope that will um, stick um, for the rest of this year and, and then heading into the future? I am tremendously proud of my teammates. Um, this has been an extremely difficult time and the way that we still were able to attack training this week and also enjoy it and enjoy each other's company was really a testament to, to players' characters. Um, and I think, yeah, that's it's a it's a huge reflection on on the strength of the players that we have. Um, and I think that's that was the message post game tonight is, you know, it's nothing's going to change overnight and in a day. Um, but I think we are proud of each other. We're proud of the effort we put in. We're proud of the the changes that we made and how we dealt with them, how we dealt with our frustrations, everything. Um, so I think, again, as as heartbreaking as this result is. Um, we can only, we can, I can only say great things about the team going forward. Excellent. Thanks. Uh, thanks to both of you for, for speaking tonight. Andre, go ahead. Appreciate both of you speaking with me. Um, just had wanted to, um, some, I guess a question for both of you on how the week was overall. I know we talked to Angela and she said she felt really supported by the club. Um, so just wanted to get your perspective on, the club and how it was training with Angela at the helm. And of course, you know, being in a game with her as the, the head coach for the first time. Yeah, it was like Sunny mentioned, it's a good week of training. It was a short one, but the effort and attitude were second to none. We were concentrated, focused throughout some pretty long sessions, just because we knew that we had a lot to get done and we implemented some new things. We, we're a lot more clear in our shape and our preparation. Um, so yeah, it was a good week. I think this group is really strong. Uh, everything that we've been through from last year and adding the new players, it's only made us stronger people. I'm really proud of just the humans that we have in this organization uh, really come together. And it's unfortunate not to get the result because I think we felt it. Um, and um, I want to say we deserved it, but thanks for not. <laughs> um, you know, that's soccer. It's uh, unfortunately a little too much deja vu to last year. And I think that hurts because uh, we had the same scenario where we came back and tied Houston late. Um, so, yeah, we were trying to turn things around and we felt like we're so close so many times. And it's just, 
just a little extra effort to kind of break through that wall. And it's just sticking to it, stay in the course, believing one each other, believing in one another and supporting one another because it's tough. It's tough to not win. We're all competitors. We're winners on this team. So it's it's been a long winless streak, but um, we got to believe we're close and keep our heads down, keep working and it'll come. Sorry, Andre, could you, your original question was about the week of training and about like Ange in particular. Yeah, I got a little long. Yeah, topic. yep. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> no worries, I appreciate it. <laughs> anyway, um, back to your question. It's, Ange is in like an incredibly difficult situation. She like could still be playing in this league, just retired, first time coaching, first time an assistant coach. And now she's in this, you know, kind of running the show position. Um, and she has handled herself with tremendous strength um, and connection, but also like standards and intensity. And as a player, that's such a hard line to walk and she does it better than anyone. Um, so it, it's it's a real pleasure to have her around and have her leading us right now. Appreciate it. And I have, um... I guess two more questions, if you if you will. Um, the first is kind of just looking at the season overall. Like uh, Aubrey was <laughs> kind of already already discussed this, uh, but I just wanted to like looking at the table is really unfortunate, obviously. But a lot of draws and even the losses are just one goal. So like, how I I, I don't want to say like how frustrating is that, but just looking at it overall and just saying like we don't really deserve to be where we are. Actually, the performances have been good. Or do you look at it and say, we did, we could have done better to win these games? I think we definitely look at ourselves and say we could have done better to win these games. I think if you repeatedly are, are in that pattern, like you have to look at yourself and, and you can't, you can't blame external circumstances for results that happen over and over and over again. And I actually feel like that was, um, we kind of took on that, that mentality. It's like, oh, it's, you know, hard. And oh, there are a lot of games and oh, and like, yeah, it is hard, but this is the NWSL and it's always hard. There's always crazy games. There's always crazy schedules. There's always crazy travel. Like that's what we signed up for. And I think um, the mentality from the beginning needs to be that. And it needs to be to like lean into that toughness and um, have that strong mentality and have the strong mentality through the game, how you prepare, how you train, um, because I, yeah, I think, gosh, I hate things. I think you like create your own luck and like sometimes you get unlucky, but if you're unlucky over and over and over again, like you have to look at yourself and have to change something. And I think um, you can't, yeah, blame that on the universe. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the two goals that we can see today, they're both off rebounds and mm -hmm. Houston was the first one to get there. So it's a bit of effort. Yeah, I appreciate that. And I actually, I almost forgot my last question. Oh, I got it. Um, just in terms of mindset, you know, your next next game for the Spirit is September 10th, but in the middle, you have some games with the U.S. Women's National Team. So how difficult is it to kind of switch the mindset? You know, you have this frustration, 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 full season. I just made up a word, uh, season <laughs> with the Spirit. And you go to play with the U.S. Women's National Team, different environment, obviously, different pressures, obviously, but that team also very good and then come back and go back into it with the spirit how do you handle that kind of up and down pressure um roller coaster i suppose you know um i can ramble for a while I have a lot of yeah go ahead i told myself tonight that i was gonna like take a deep breath and think about all my answers before i started talking and i have yet to do that um rambling is a strength um, yeah, I think it's always difficult, no matter where you are in your season, what team you are to balance it back and forth. Um, but it's also a tremendous privilege. Um, I feel obviously like conflicting emotions because I feel bummed to not be around the spirit right now. Cause I just feel like we need each other. Um, so it's hard to leave, um, at the same time, like I really love being in camp. Um, it's obviously a huge honor 
the training sessions are amazing. Team is amazing. Like you said, Nigeria will be a great opponent. So there's a lot to look forward to there. Um, and it is a lot of pressure. And um, I'm like even like grateful like um, for the staff who've checked in on us um, from the national team as you know, the days have passed. Um, I think that helps just being like open and honest about where we are. Um, but front, I'm going to schedule a call for my sports hike and we're, we're going to rebound real quick because <laughs> you have to, you have to, you can't, um, you have to uh, talk things through and get your mind right and prepare for the situation ha at hand and stay present one day at a time. So um, I think we will be really focused in camp as, as much as we can while still checking in um, on things here and it, you know, it's never hard. It's never easy. Um, it's always hard to balance. So we have a lot of practice and we'll utilize that practice. Yeah. Also, uh, I was, that, that was kind of, oh, sorry. <laughs> Re reiterate what Amy said. It's an honor and a privilege every time I'm called into camp. So yeah, it's, it's difficult to manage, especially because we want to see the spirit succeed. And um, when we leave, it's tough. We want to obviously be with the girls and be together and keep pushing and improving together as a team. But yeah, it's it's nice to be away with the national team, especially this summer. It felt good to get away and win some games. <laughs> and we were all really excited to come and bring that back to the spirit. And fortunately, kind of hit a brick wall when we came back and it didn't work out how we had hoped for. But like I said, we do have a lot of winners on this team. And I know that if we stay committed to the process, we're going to get there. The Our organization is incredibly supportive. The level of investment that Michelle is putting into this club by going and hiring Mark, like she will have a global search, you know, to fill these positions, some of the gaps in our organization on the sporting side and the business side. And you're not seeing that from any other NWSL club. So she and reminds us next, patience. Um, that's an expect more from us. As well. Yeah. And it's an opportunity for us to raise our standards, like with her level of investment and commitment, like it's going to put the onus on us. We have to step our game up and there won't be excuses. We'll have everything we need to win. And so, um, we have to produce those results going forward. I really appreciate it. Thank you for the statement and, and your openness. Thank Thanks, you. Andre. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Aubrey. We will see everybody back in two weeks. Thank you. Thanks.